Tell us, who is eligible for a life settlement? Well, life settlements are a very unique financial transaction because they are specifically designed to economically reward somebody the older they are or the more impaired their health is. So when you think of a life settlement, think of it in terms of reverse underwriting. Mm. The younger and healthier you are when you buy insurance, the better that's going to be for you. Right. But if you, time comes that you own a life insurance policy and you think you might want to sell it off through a life settlement, now the older and quite frankly, the sicker that somebody is, the mm-hmm. better a life settlement is going to be for them. So somebody who's too young and healthy is not going to qualify for a life settlement, just like somebody who would be too old or impaired with their health wouldn't qualify to buy insurance. Got it. Interesting. Okay. So if you're, you know, 50 years old and you have a few years left in your life policy and you're still active, engaged and working, you know, and you're like, do I keep paying these premium payments? I don't necessarily maybe need it. Or maybe you're 60 years old. You know, you have to be in poor health to really be able to get a good amount of this policy. It's not like, oh, my term's coming to end. You know, I want to get something back in return. That's not how it works. Right. If, again, yeah. you know, and, and we see this happen. Pete will get content contacted by people in their 50s, their 60s, even their 70s, but they're perfectly healthy. They're not going to qualify for a life settlement. It's the combination of age, typically 65 and above, the size of the policy's death benefit, 100,000 and above, and Mm -hmm. that there are some health impairments. So again, the older and sicker somebody is, the more a life settlement can do for them. If you're too young and healthy, you're not going to qualify. Got it. And so how is this different from a viatical settlement, Chris? I think some people have probably heard that term before. What's the difference? Yeah, viatical settlements is sort of where all this started three, four decades ago. Viatical settlements are specifically regulated as a settlement for somebody who is terminally ill. So if you have two years of life expectancy or less, you have a terminal illness, a terminal condition, then a viatical settlement, which is regulated in ways differently than a life settlement, which would be for somebody with a longer life expectancy. The life settlement world, typically the person who's going to qualify is going to have a life expectancy between two and 10 years remaining measurably through underwriting, actuarially looking at their medical records. You're going to be able to to somewhat determine what you think a reasonable life expectancy range is. And if somebody looks like they're going to be living longer than 10 years, you know, you're starting to get to 15, 20, 30 years of remaining life expectancy. That's just too long of a remaining life expectancy to work for life settlements. But like I will tell people when they apply for a life settlement and they don't qualify, I'll tell them, well, the bad news is the good news. You don't qualify <laughs> for a life settlement. Yeah, I see that. And, and what about that underwriting? So you said medical records right. um, to find out if you're eligible. I would imagine there's some questions that you, you know, typical questions that you ask. But after an application's filled out, what can people expect when they're trying to qualify for a life settlement? You know, from start to finish, the life settlement process will take about 90 days. Okay. Initially, you're going to submit made a simple application with some basic information, who you are, contact information, age, gender, the type of policy you have, the size of the policy, and some health information. What are your prevailing health conditions? What are your mm-hmm. what are the medications that you're taking? And from that, you can maybe identify quickly if somebody is not a prospect for a settlement and let them know you're not going to qualify, but maybe in the future, if you hang on to your policy, you will. Okay. Going forward, though, if somebody looks like they are going to qualify, then there's going to be a collecting of medical records to review what their current health conditions are, any diagnosis, any prescriptions. And from there, you're going to start to paint a picture of what their health is and what their potential remaining life expectancy is. That gives you the information to then figure out what percentage of the death benefit would it be possible to pay to that person in exchange for settling their life insurance policy. Because in the end, that's how it works. You're selling your life insurance policy for a percentage of the death benefit today. It's present day value. So Mm. round numbers, let's say you had a $100,000 life insurance policy. And Mm -hmm. based on the underwriting, it looked like your life expectancy was going to be between five and 10 more years. Maybe you'd be getting 20 to 30% of the death benefit paid to you today for a life settlement. The range can can drop down into the 10%, even below range, and can get as high as 50 and 60%. Mm -hmm. But on average, you know, 20, 25%, let's say. Uh, And once the settlement was done, 
you'd no longer be responsible for making any more premium payments. You would no longer be the owner of the policy. Your mm -hmm. beneficiaries would be replaced by the new ownership, the investment bank that now owns the policy. And someday, years in the future, when that person passed away, that ownership group would actually collect the death benefit. That would be their return on the investment that they had put out in right. buying the policy by putting that money up front, keeping it in force over years with premium payments. And the target typically for investors is somewhere in the 10 to 15% return on investment range is what okay. they're trying to achieve when ultimately that death benefit pays out to them years in the future.